building, you know? Well, Kenyan-born and now Cape Town-based author Ijangolet Ogwang's debut, An Image in a Mirror. Now, this is a book that takes us on a journey of twin sisters, Cheng and Yagali, who were separated uh, from childhood. Now, Ijangolet's raw perspectives on social themes she explores in this book, such as the thin line between rural and city upbringing, uh, displacement and women empowerment, is narrated effortlessly in this read. And for more on this, Ijangolet joins us now from our studios in Seapoint in Cape Town. A very good morning to you, Ijangolet, and uh, welcome to Good morning live. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. First of all, uh, I'm quite fascinated about the, the title, An Image in a Mirror. And you also raise the concern that uh, it's so strange how humans uh, desire to see themselves in mirror image, staring back, from the, uh, the staring back from the glass with their parts reversed, but their colors reflected. Uh, and uh, the, this, what was that message that's encapsulated particularly in this title alone? So, I mean, it was twofold, really, where the first thing was that the story does deal with identical twins and aims to show you the differences and similarities between those two. But as well, when you look in a mirror and you see your part reverse, a lot of the story is about juxtaposing ideas that are seemingly contradictory, but it's almost getting the reader to imagine those ideas coexisting in the same space. So you find that as you read the novel, I have so many themes next to each other that at first glance feel like they shouldn't fit in well with each other. Um, so it is a story about duality, and that's why the mirror image became important, both for the twins but also for this narrative of duality. Yeah, and, and unpack for us, if you can, the story of uh, the twins. How does it unfold in the book as they go about living their different lives separately? Cool. So I don't want to give away too much, but the way the story is told, it's, it's a story told in parallel where each of their lives and each of the age stages are told at the same time. And it's really a story about how they come of age, how they fall in love, how they grapple with societal issues in these environments that they find themselves, how they find causes that they devote their lives to, and ultimately how they meet each other and feel the sense of connection, but at the same time the sense of great separation due to the realities that they're both faced in different worlds. Now, Ijangolet, I, I find it very interesting how uh, you were able to capture, you know, the different lives the sisters live and the impact uh, in their upbringing with one raised in rural Uganda and the other one in affluent South Africa, uh, how that changed and shaped their life experiences. Tell us how you managed to capture that thin line uh, between uh, dividing the rich and the poor. Yeah, yeah, so that was definitely the case where I wanted to divide those two stories, but also to, to, to probe those stories in a different light. So how there would be assumptions about the poor and assumptions about their lives and assumptions about their feeling of the village that I wanted to dispel. But at the same time, I wanted to almost speak about the gender roles that are sometimes stifling in the context of the village. And then in the city, there's this idea that the city is this never ending haven of just endless dreams and possibilities, but equally how the city was violent in cases to Nyakale's identity and how she struggled with all those homogenous ideas of what the city represented and what her life as a, as a, as a sequence of being in the city was meant to represent. Um, so, so that was very important for me to, to almost contrast those two experiences, but to also dispel these ideas or this instantaneous ideas that we have of those two environments. You know, the plot thickens towards the end. It gets very, very interesting towards the end. And uh, there's actually a profound moment uh, towards the end of the book where Nyakali reflects how different her life could have been had her sister been in her life. So do you think their lives could have uh, been any different had they met earlier? I, I do think so, because I think a lot of their lives, as much as it's at a point, so initially in the story it's very explicit, but then later on in the story it fades, but a lot of their lives is this desire and longing for this other part of you, um, and, and for, for Acheng, who's in Uganda with her mother, at the same time, hers is this feeling of my sister left with a part of my mother, and there's almost this part of my mother that I'll never have access to, and what, as a result, it means for her to watch her mother mourn um, a daughter she gave away. So I think for both of them, not having each other creates this gap, not only in their lives, but in the lives of those around them. So even Nyakale's relationship with her aunt and the desire to see her mother, but the desire not to see her mother. So for both of them, had they been brought up together, I do think it would have been a very different narrative.
Absolutely. Now, and what do you think uh, the twins learned about themselves? And more importantly, what can the readers learn from uh, Nyakale and Achen? I think a part of a big part of the story for me was to to address a lot of social political um, um, issues or other themes that are currently in present day Uganda and in present day South Africa, and and I think the twins, as you read the story, tend to be very reflective, and and I think for me one of the biggest themes I hope the reader gets from the book is to be curious about life and to engage life beyond the surface, and you see that in the way they approach the causes. So Nyakale being on campus during Roads Must Fall and Acheng being at the forefront of land rights for women in rural Uganda, which are real issues. So, so to use fiction almost as a tool of activism to get people to think a lot more deeper about issues that you'd often think about on surface level and not think about the humans behind the issues. So they are almost the faces behind all these grapples of what it means to be women in these two countries. And tell you what, uh, my curiosity was an all-time high after reading this book. But uh, Jean Goulet, thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. All the best. Yeah. Well, that was our author of a novel Great. titled Thank An you so Image much for in a me. Mirror, Ijangulit Ogwang, and she was helping us unpack this de debut novel uh, that explores the becoming of two young women who are the same as much as they are different. Let's go for an air break now.